Now, you know, we heard during the, uh, the, uh, the untimely passing of Princess Diana all the coverage on television uh, about how much the monarchy was out of touch, uh, about how the queen was out of touch, about yeah. how Britain didn't need the monarchy anymore. Yeah. And being a child of the United Kingdom, yeah. the land of the Windsors, your, your thoughts on the monarchy in, in, I, in this I time? I think the monarchy is a good thing. It's, uh, I, w it's, I used to be very anti-monarchist, and I still am anti-monarchy. But there's a role that the monarchy could and should be playing that is a role slightly apart from the government. To what somebody should be watching the government, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and I think they are uh, quite well suited as as a body, like the ombudsman. The ombudsman's nice, but he's part of the government. It would be nice to have a, a body like them. You can't go to the House of Lords, for instance, right. without going to the, the the House of Parliament first, the House of Commons first. It would be nice to have another body who watched both of them, because I think they're both... In the old days, I liked it when you had MPs like Emmanuel Shinwell and driven, driven men with passion who would occasionally punch one another and, 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 and lose control. Sure. Because passionate. But now Parliament seems to be filled with careerists. Lawyers and careerists, you know, who I are know exactly what you mean, but it's the, sa it's the same in our Congress and our legislature in Washington. These are all career public servants. Yes. They're there for years and years and years and years. And somebody once described the Houses of Parliament to me as, as a big shock absorber, where good ideas go in at one end, they all bash it and bash it until it's, it, is, it no longer resembles the thing that went in and in, they'll pass the law. Sure, sure. And it's of no use to anybody. But, but you said in the beginning that you think the monarchy in some The monarchy has a bigger role to play. It, it, goes, it is charity work, and it, that they should be doing more than that. That's why they're seen to be kind of useless, you know. But they, they, their, their earnings for the country are enormous, like super enormous. Billions and billions of pounds they draw into that country. And they should be treated with a wee bit of respect. My only beef, really, is that by all means get rid of them, but don't humiliate them. You see, the British like humiliation. That's why we don't have capital punishment anymore, because you're gone too quickly, you know. <laughs> they, 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 like, they like to jab you through the bars for a few years, yeah, yeah. you know, with a sharp stick, you know. And any time you look like being released, they'll say, there he is! That's the guy! You, you've never quite paid your dues to society. Well, they like humiliation. Yeah. There's a man in Britain, and I feel so, I've met him. His name's Jack Profumo, a wonderful guy. When he was minister for war, believe it or not, he wasn't even minister of defence. Was, was this the this guy? This would be was the, this the scandal, the, the sex scandal. scandal. Profumo, yeah, yeah. yeah the sex that that right. is still called the Profumo affair. That's right. The man is still alive. He paid his dues. He was thrown out of government. And pilloried for a while. Pilloried. Now, he has made the honours list since then for his charitable work. He's a renowned and a nice guy, but every time he's just settled and happy, the Profumo affair <laughs> raises its head again. Yeah, right. Don't get comfy, Jack. <laughs> yeah. We haven't forgotten, you know. You're not off the hook yet, <laughs> mate. Huh? No, 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 no. And you know, when you're introduced to him, you're desperate to say, hey, did you? I mean, how was the thing? And you, <laughs> yeah. you, you can't think of anything else. Because he's the only Profumo I know. Yeah, I remember when I first moved to California in 63, it was the biggest thing in the news here in California. De night after night on local programs in L.A., we had this fellow Profumo, and then Mandy Rice Davies, wasn't my, that? My, that's yeah. right, Christine Keeler. Yeah, and Christine yes. Keeler were the chicks, yeah. Well, he, yeah. he gets the blame for everything. It's the Profumo affair. That's right. And, and it was so long ago that he was minister for war. There's no such post anymore. No. You're minister of defense now, you know. And the Americans were amazed that somebody in Britain was interested in sex at all, you know. They found us the most sexless race in the world, you know. They thought there was people on honeymoon waiting to be formally introduced, you know, the kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you here, because he took a pretty good rap in the, uh, in, in the news when the Diana story was playing yeah. out. And that's Prince Charles. Now, you know of this man, I'm told. He's a nice man. He's you, a friend you, you, of mine. He's a friend. Charles. Yes, I look on him as my friend. Uh, I've met him maybe six or ten times or something. And, you know, I've been to Well, I'm house. just wondering how a guy who was a welder in Glasgow gets to be butt buddies. I'll with tell you how it happened. Oh, 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 okay. uh, Jackie Stewart is a friend of mine, the racing car driver. Oh, sure, driver, sure. Right? And every two years, he ran a charitable uh, clay pigeon shooting. Oh, sure, okay. And I don't, I don't do it, but I lived in the countryside, and I would go out for the occasional... But I used to be good with a rifle when I was in the, the, the military guy, but, but the, 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 it's different. So... Is I, this I, where they say pull, and some guy pull, pull, yeah, he pulls, yeah. Some minion yeah. pulls it, you know. <laughs> yeah. you, you've got the corduroys and the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull! Yeah, right. Pull, and boom, boom, boom. 
right. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. So when we went there and Sean Connery was there, I think, and various odds and ends and sports guys and royal people. So we met, uh, we had dinner. There was Princess Anne and all that. And, and I was beside Princess Anne at dinner. I found a very pleasant woman. Yeah. And then Fergie turned up. She wasn't part of it. But Sarah were, she was about right. to be married. Right, Sarah Ferguson. And... Uh, and we were talking about she heroin. She would be married to Andrew, right? Aye. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. We were talking about drugs at the table. Princess Anne wanted to know about drugs and, oh. and young people and all that. And, and I had heard down to here, so she thought I was... So you weren't talking about where you could buy them or anything? No, like she, didn't, she didn't want to buy it. Okay. <laughs> she didn't say, like, are you... Where do you get the good stuff? <laughs> you know? No, yeah. she, didn't, she didn't say, like, are you holding, Billy? Are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. So yeah. the word blow didn't come into the conversation. Got, so. got, got you. Good. Yeah. In the drug sense of the word, yeah. <laughs> Maybe later. There wasn't, there, wasn't, yeah. there wasn't one reference to Peruvian marching powder. I, I got you. Right. So, <coughs> but there was an ad, uh, I can't, there was a campaign on TV at the time against heroin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it could hardly be for it, but it was, a, it was an anti-heroin thing. And there was a young guy, it's supposed to be over a period of time, getting worse and worse. And, and you know, and he ends up in a kind of cave thing and... Uh, it's all sweaty and saying, yeah, oh. brain scramble. And she said, do you, do you think it works? And I said, well, most of the guys I work for are gay. And they all fancy the guy in the advert. And the more, the worse he gets, the better looking they think he is. Uh -huh, you know, yeah. he's all windswept and interesting and sweaty and <laughs> shirt hanging up. And I said, it's not working. And, and I said, if, if, you, if you're going to do an advert like that against heroin, just say to young people, so you, do you want to use heroin? Have you ever been in a heroin user's apartment? Have you ever smelled a heroin user's apartment? Sh show them that end of the business, mm -hmm. that it makes you flatulent and smelly, and you stink, you know, and you're, you're completely sexually unattractive. And that, that's what, but you can't say to a young person, oh, don't take heroin, it kills you. That's the attraction. Of course. It's like saying, don't buy a motorcycle, you could fall off and go, oh, really? Really? Let me try wow. that. Yeah, yeah. So, so we did say that. it makes you stink and makes you yeah. fart. Huh? That, that, yeah, it makes yeah. you fart and it makes you stink, you know. And because anybody I knew who used heroin, I couldn't bear to now, be in the house. Now, how does Prince Charles come into this? Right. Country? So yeah. I was invited by Fergie then to mm -hmm. the right. wedding. Oh. To at the, at the wedding yeah, of her and yeah, Andrew, yeah, she yeah. and Andrew. Yeah. We went and we went to a big do before that in a big tent, and, and it was uh, the Queen and the Queen Mother and the King of wow. this and the Marquis of that and the thing. And Elton was there, and Elton John's sure. friend. So. Yeah. David He's Frost. a friend of yours too. Oh yes, yeah, okay. with the same. I'm known El Elton since the sixties. And David Frost. Oh. Right. So, so that was pals for me, and we were in among all these royals. They were used to it. I wasn't so used to it. But the Queen uh, was there. Oh, the Queen and the Queen Mother oh. and the Duke. I'm like, do they say hello when they? Come oh yeah, and the dance like, like the disco at the end. To, you know. And the, the, the Queen. The, disc the Queen is there giving it that. <laughs> really? <laughs> but the handbag. Yeah. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Aye. Yeah. You know, you've got a live band at one end. Yeah, I got over there. And they, they do all this yeah. uh, dancing. And then at the other end, it's yummy, yummy. I've got love in my tummy. And <laughs> <laughs> KC in the Sunshine yeah, and, Band. And like, is Prince Charles there too? Is Prince Charles was there, and that's where I met him. Oh. And then he said, would I be part of his uh, Prince's Trust? It's a, it's a magnificent organization. Uh, it's a charitable organization. creates employment for young people putting young people in business of their own. The Prince's Trust. The Prince's Trust. Yeah. And he, he sets people up in business, young people. And it's been really? an enormous success. It's see, but you never hear about that. Nobody you just talk, hear, no. You see, what you should talk about with Prince Charles, he's got big ears, he talks to trees, he's otherworldly, he's, he's, he's stiff and boring. He yeah. is none of these things. He's an extremely nice man. And it's an act of extraordinary disloyalty. But you see, disloyalty. the only thing we ever see him do was he, like he was stiff at the thing at Hong Kong, you know, where they, they gave the, the Hong Kong to the Chinese. Yeah. And he, you know, was kind of wooden. But that's, you see, he's, he's had a formal education. He's lived a formal life. Yeah, I he's know, going to be the king. Yeah. That's what kings do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sit up straight, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's, it's just, it, I, I watch these people on TV. I get so angry at the people who represent Britain in this country. The royal biographer. Royal Watcher. What's that? that? That to me, that's an Elvis spotter. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what the hell's a Royal Watcher? Yeah. So like when you went to the party where the Queen was and the mm. Queen Mother and Prince Charles and all these people, Elton, yeah. 
What were you? Were, were you famous at the time? Oh, I'm very big in Britain. Yeah. Oh, oh aye. Okay. So they they knew me and oh hello and how'd you do? Yeah, yeah. How's your father? So we became friends. I like him. I like his brother Andrew too. Yeah. Prince Andrew and it, that was I became friendly with the 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 Yorks first, the you know Andrew and, and Sarah, and then uh, Prince Charles and uh, not so much Diana. She kind of lived her own life socially. She had uh, he had his friends and she had her friends. Because of their ages, I think. You know, you know, he's had the friends that he's had all his life, and she's had friends. Oh, Charles, you mean? Charles, yeah, yeah. and and uh, Diana had her friends who were her age. Right, right. So he would come and, and have dinner with us, and she would go and have dinner with her pals mm -hmm. and all that, which is what most people in the world do, actually. Yeah, yeah. And he's a, a great guy, very, very badly sold to the and very badly sold to the Americans by British people who should know better. Well, you see, uh, uh, see, they can see mileage in it. They think they're going to get a lot of mileage out of this mm -hmm. in America. But Charlie, Charlie's a good guy then, huh, Charlie? He's a very nice well, man. Well, we'll have to get him in here. I'll call him on the phone and ask uh, him to come on the show. You, you would really like him. Oh, He's I'm, done a bit of telly. I, I, I beg your pardon? He's done a bit of television. Oh, he has. Yeah. Well, I'll get him on the phone tomorrow. We'll get him in here and we'll have a chat. Yeah, he's a delightful guy, yes, let well, me tell you. Hey, we're, we're going to find it out. We'll get him in here, along with uh, St uh, Stallone's coming in, too. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, continue with Billy Connolly. You know, I had about 25 other questions I was going to ask you, but that was a very interesting story you told about the party where they were with the Queen. Oh, the... it's a pink tent with chandeliers. Uh, well, right. Up. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Billy Connolly is the guest. The picture's called Mrs. Brown. Now, this is about uh, Queen Victoria, right? Oh, yes. I hear she was something, by the way. She was an extraordinary woman. Yeah, yeah. Well, Aye. we'll get to it in a second. Aye, sure. But let me do the, the, the commercial here. The toll-free is up and running at 800-952-2788. And after this break, we'll be right back. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm really, I'm really excited to be through to speak to speak to both you. Um, okay. Um, Billy, I was just m noticing the the clean cut on you. I've, oh yeah. I've, your appearance through the years, I've, I've always found you attractive, but you're nice and clean tonight. How, why is that? Because I just uh, finished a movie, Janice, uh, in New York. I, uh, it's tentatively called Ship of Fools. Uh -huh. and, uh, well, there a, was a picture. There was, a, but they yeah. just called it that just yeah. now because it's about a cruise, a, a ship full of idiots on, on a cruise. Uh -huh. And I am a, I'm a homosexual <laughs> tennis coach. <laughs> in the movie, in the movie, and uh, but but the Take whole care. thing, but the whole thing takes place in the 1930s, mm -hmm. and so they took back when there weren't an awful lot of homosexual tennis coaches. That's probably. right. So they shaved, they shaved, uh, and I'm homosexual as opposed to gay. Yeah, there's nothing gay about this guy. He's just <laughs> homosexual. <laughs> uh, when homophobia was the other way round, you know, when you, if you were homophobic, you were you had a phobia about men. So. He's a short, short, brill creamy hair and no beard. Sorry to disappoint you. Oh, not at all. You're, you're, you're still nice. That's good. I like London, Ontario. It's a good place. I'm, no, I'm hoping you'll come back and have a, a pint at the Scots Corner when you come. I, I will come back, but I won't have a pint at the Scots Corner. I've been there before. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, no more, no more pints? No more pints for Bill Bill. Oh, it's oh, all yeah, over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm really you... glad to be talking to you anyway, Billy. And, uh, and it's good a real pleasure. Thank you. I'm sure that movie you. will be a hit. For, it'll be the, uh, another hit for oh, you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Janice. Okay. Thank you too, Tom. You're welcome, Janice. Good night, Bye -bye. now. <laughs> <laughs> So you had your share of pints, huh? Oh, I had many Gave it a pints. good run? Oh, yes. I drank my whole share at once. <laughs> it was brilliant. I had the time of my life. Did you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> it was lovely. Twenty years of bliss. Yeah. <laughs> this, and I, I, I always copied that old thing that blues singers in America used to say, there is no problem so big you can't run away from it. You know? <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, right. get it yeah. down you and yeah. forget the whole thing. Well, I'll thing. tell you, I gave it a good run, too, and I still have a nip now and again. You don't, you're lucky. But uh, I gave it a good run, and one day a man said to me, he says, you know, he says, you can't drown your troubles, because if they're real troubles, they can swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine could do the back. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> I tell you, you but I, I was never a guy for spirits. You know, the guys who do the, the whiskey and all that seem to be the ones who get in worse trouble. I was beer and wine, but uh -huh. plenty of yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, on one night, I had 13 bottles of Chablis. I mean, I didn't hang about, you know. So, but I was 13, 13 bottles. bottles. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Well, I paid for 13. I don't know many I drank. But I remember once, there was a guy in Scotland called Callum Kennedy. You would love him. He's a Highland singer. One of those guys with a high yeah. tenor voice and a kilt and all that. He's a Batman. He wears 
you know the plaid, the big scarf that comes Oh, over. surely. He oh. wears that on a ring, you know, so he goes like this and the whole thing goes, you know, it's yeah. very strange. But he's a delightful sick, but he loves whiskey. Valentine's five star. Mm -hmm. I was in the BBC club in Glasgow, and this is like Death Wish drinking, those big Highland guys. He came in with four pipers from the Glasgow Police Pipe Band, you know, huge big men, all kilties. And he, ah, Billy, it's yourself. Will you have a drink? And he says, five large, but six, Billy's here, six large Valentines. A huge big fight. So they go, slide you. And it's, you know, you and I'm trying to get it down. So I've done about half of it. Six, says the second guy. Six large, but so I've got one and a half, and I'm, you know, working away. Six large, slangy, six, two and a half. Six large, so by the time it gets to me, there's about four left, and I'm struggling with the thing. And, and oh, 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 six, please, six large things. So they all come up, and I'm trying to keep up and keep a good face on it. Six, six. So somebody says, where's the toilet? And, and they all disappear out the door. The papers are away to the bathroom, four papers. And, and I've got like five left, and I'm, I'm steaming drunk. And Callum turns to me and he says, Do you fancy a quick one while they're away? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I could never, I was, but I would drink like constantly. Too much time on my hands, yeah, and too exactly. much money. Not enough to do and too much money. And I did that weird turnaround where I was really, I used to be really happy when I was drunk, and singing and in good company. Then I became this other guy. I, I would be horrible to people who liked me and lovely to people who didn't know me. It was a strange yeah, affair. Yeah. Horrible to my family, but nice to strangers and all that. Then I developed two memories. I, that, that's when I got scared. I used to black out when I was drinking and, uh, and I couldn't remember the night before, but it would gra gradually seep yep. back to me. Come back, yeah. Well, suddenly it stopped coming back and I, w I wouldn't remember until I got drunk again. I'd go, oh, I remember now. So I had a drunk memory and a sober one, and I thought, I think maybe... Yeah, maybe it's time. Yeah. I think these are signs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Somebody, I should pay attention yeah, to these yeah, signs yeah, here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. and that was 14 years ago. And I must say, I don't miss it. Well, good for you. I, I drink dead red. It's Grateful Dead uh, alcohol-free wine. It sounds terrible, but it's lovely. Dead red? Dead red, yeah. <laughs> as well. I've got a following of winos as well. I was really nice. To, uh, a lot of winos in Britain are Scottish and Irish, you know. We have a Celtic problem with that kind of thing. And they turn up at the, the dressing room door, and I would give them money, and the word is obviously going out, he's easy, you know. So I've got this following. <laughs> This following of wino has turned up at the stage well, door. Let me ask you, you know, I've heard Richard Harris tell stories, because Richard's an Irish guy. Oh, okay? yeah. And he would talk about, like, whenever he won an acting award, he was a British actor, but if he was drunk, he was an Irish actor. That's right. Okay. Is there that same feeling about the Scots yes. in, in Great Britain? The Scots are very, very sensitive to it. Like, for instance, my manager's an Englishman, and he talks about uh, Britain as England. And I keep correcting him. I say, look, that's offensive. He says things like, England won the war. And we had the English Empire. And people would land in aeroplanes. Americans and, and Englishmen would land in, in Glasgow and say how nice it was to be in England. In England, right. Yeah, and people find it. They get, it's just over time it has become a real irritant. It's not all that important if you take it one, t one thing at a time. But when it happens your whole life, if, it, if people are racing at the Olympics and they win the British and they lose the Scottish, Oh, really? Yeah. So there is that line of demarcation here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's unconscious. I don't think it's intentional at all. But that makes it even worse when you don't have to uh, correct yourself. You just naturally flow into this kind of pale bigotry. You know, it, w l let me ask you uh, about people who live in London and how Londoners yeah. are perceived in the rest of the empire, the British Empire, yes. United Kingdom, yes. okay? I was in Italy a couple of weeks back with some friends in Florence, and they looked down their nose at the Romans. The Romans are rude, the Romans are arrogant, you know. The Parisians in France. The same, the Parisians yeah. in France, New Yorkers in the United States, huh? Absolutely. Huh? So now how about the Londoners in the United Kingdom? That's huh? right. They're looked on exactly the Is same. Is that right? Uh, but not by me. No, no. But no, by, because but by I the... like Parisians and Romans as well, yeah, so and New I. Yorkers. Yeah. But by the general but population? But generally they're looked on as... They call them barra boys, the street salesmen, oh. second-hand car dealers, you know, shifty, yeah. smooth-talking, yeah. shifty guys. Yeah. Yes, that's see. how they're seen. Spivs, this is, what was the word? A great word. Spiv? Spiv. I, S -P -I -V. Yeah. That was a guy who would sell you stuff uh, during the war, stuff, eggs and all weren't available. The Spiv always had it. Uh -huh, you know, big uh -huh. flashy ties, yeah. midnight blue suit, white socks. 
Spiv. Yeah. Lot of Spiv. Braille cream. Spiv. Got Spiv. it. Spiv. Yeah. yeah. We got the, them. We got them here too. And Aaron Bevan said conservatism is organized spivery. That was, yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will continue here with uh, Billy Conley. We'll chat about Mrs. Brown, which is about Queen Victoria. And we'll talk with more of you, I trust, on the toll-free at 800-952-2788. Now, these messages. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Billy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I met you in Dubai about 14, 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you had any stories that you can delete. Oh, about Dubai? Uh-huh. And, oh, why, and why were you there? Why were you, were you with an oil rig worker? Big pardon? Were you oil people? No, medical. Me oh, right. Were you, did I meet you at the country club? Yes. Oh, yeah. This is the weirdest place in the world. Dude. And and you were there because... I, w I entertain there. Oh, okay. I do the United Arab Emirates, you know, the Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all that. See, Kuwait. Uh -huh. Kuwait's a good gig. See, even the Kuwait... That's the difference between us and other guys. When, when the Kuwait war happened, you say, oh, well, there's another good gig, bites the dust. Or they hand Hong Kong back, you say, well, that's another gig out the window. You know, it's politicians don't ask us anything. <laughs> but in Dubai, there was a place to, where I met this woman, the country club, and it was a, it was a bit toffee-nosed, actually. It was a British upper-class types would, had run it. But I can tell by this woman's accent, she isn't one of them. But the... They had a golf course there on the sand. They now have a big flashy golf course. The, 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 the local sheikh has built a big flashy place. But then, in those days, they had, it was built on sand, and if you, you had a wee bit of green, which they would water in the right, clubhouse. Right. And you took, it with, you took it with you, and you put it in the sand, and you put a tee on it. You, know, <laughs> and you, you whacked Get off, it, and then they hand it to a guy, and he carries it up to, to the next hole. They're all nuts. And they're all yeah, a little grass piece. Yes, yeah, yeah. a little piece of grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, put, put it down like this. <laughs> and, and, and the green was black. It was, it was oil all That's smashed right. up. Yeah, yeah. It was very weird. But it's a nice place. You see, uh, since uh, Beirut uh, and uh, the, the war in Lebanon... There's and another all, gig gone. Huh? And that's another good gig out the <laughs> yeah, window. I'm glad yeah. you spotted yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm here for, to the, spot, the, to spot, spot these lost things. Gigs, right. The lost gigs yeah, right. of the 20th century. Well... The money, that used to be the money capital, and it has all gone to Bahrain. So all the, the um, accountants, lawyers, uh, they're all there. My God, somebody's My God, something, in. something, somebody's coming in this room that's there's not something, supposed to be. The, it's a plumbing <laughs> fault from where you I'm You can't sitting. hear it, but there's a terrible noise coming from backstage. Mark, go back there and see what's going on. It's like something really expensive is wrong with your Harley Davidson. Yeah, or something's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone. Yeah. I have a pipe at home, in my plumbing it goes, oh, yeah. and exactly e major. What's going on back there? The pipes are leaking, the, pi the air pipes. Oh, the air conditioning pipes are, have ruptured. Isn't, it, isn't, isn't that good? Yeah. Isn't that the first verse of Danny Boy? <laughs> <laughs> the pipes, the pipes are leaking. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 There goes another gig, huh? Yeah. There's another oh, gig out the window. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to me in Massachusetts. Wait a second, oh. Margaret. Where did you happen to bump into uh, Billy in, 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 in uh, Dubai? Hello? He nearly tripped over me coming into the swimming pool. Oh, in I the did. Hotel, first of all. In those days, I used to play in the tennis court. Is that right? I mean, you were like, a, what do you call it? A cooperative milk bottle. <laughs> you were so that means white. It was skinny and white. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cooperative in Scotland is a, is a grocery chain, and, and the milk bottles are thin and white. So she said I was like a cooperative milk bottle. Yeah, yeah. I was thin and white in Dubai. Ah, it was it's a strange place in the, the, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. There's a, there are two sheikhs there who are very jealous of one another. Just a second. No, Mark, don't Mark, Mark, please. It's a burglar. Are we gonna I'm telling you, it's a burglar. I, I know, folks, you can't hear this. Are we going to be okay? Oh, yeah, we're oh, right. nothing, this is, The ceiling's not going to fall they down. They can hear it, too. Oh, they can? Good. Yeah. Good. So, I'm sorry. It's a cheap and shabby operation uh, here. Yes, we are. What yes, kind of are. operation yeah. are you we're, running we, here? We are what is known as nickel nicers here. We, we are, yeah. Nickel and nicer. by the way, you're a fine one. You're a fine one to call us cheap. Huh? <laughs> huh? You got a whole nation that's. On. <laughs> you bet, you sweet bum. Yeah. There's a, there's a Scot. They usually accuse Scotsmen of dropping a handful of change, bending down to pick it up, and it hits them in the back of the neck. You know. <laughs> so, the, where did that come from that Scotsmen are cheap? Where in actual fact, it came from, it started with Aberdeen. Aberdeen was the first city in history to go bankrupt. And that was in Victorian times. It, I don't know where they'd overspent, but they, they actually applied 
the, for bankruptcy. Uh -huh. And, and comedians found this extremely funny oh, I see. that okay. a city would be bankrupt, would be yeah. bankrupt yeah. and all the, they were Aberdeen jokes. And then the, in Aberdeen, the, 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 they had an Aberdeen joke factory turning these jokes out. No kidding. Yeah, and they became Scottish jokes. Oh, and then okay. Harry Lauder there you, pushed it, you know, Sir yeah, Harry Lauder. Sir Harry, right. He would give the porter a penny at the Waldorf Astoria. Here you are, my good man. Yeah. Take care yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. Save that for the rest Peter, of your life. Take yeah. that, you know, and yeah. all that stuff. And he pushed it along. Yeah. Anyway, Margaret, I'm glad you Margaret, called. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. Keep the good work with the royal family. Oh, aye, aye. I'm all for it. Ah, they're fine. They look after themselves, I Margaret. Know. You know what I mean? Okay, Margaret, glad right. you called. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Love you, bye. Now, you mentioned that Aberdeen went bust in Victorian times. That's right. Which leads me to the movie. Uh, oh, aye, Victoria. Well, yeah. Yes, and well, Vic Queen Victoria, when you're a wee boy in Scotland, you're taught that Queen Victoria slept with a Scottish guy. John right. Brown. They were lovers. John Brown. Yeah, they were lovers. He was a ghillie. That is, he was a Highland guide from Balmoral Castle. He was a great friend of Prince Albert's. He would take him fishing, hunting, all that. That's his job, you know. But he and Albert got on really well. Uh -huh. Now, Queen Victoria was madly in love with Prince Albert and, uh, and furious that he never became king. They wouldn't, because he was a German, you see. And uh, <clears throat> she was madly in love. And when he died, she was in mourning for four years. So this, the, uh, it was uh, Disraeli, Benjamin Disraeli's idea, the Prime Minister, sure. to send John Brown to see her in the Isle of Wight and talk her into coming back into circulation because the government was actually thinking and getting rid of the monarchy altogether because she hadn't showed up. The people yeah. were fed up with it. And said, you know, she just stayed enough. home for four yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So John Brown went there and he, he was a rough guy, a countryman, big beard, kilt, and spoke to her like a woman. He didn't speak that formal way to her. He couldn't be bothered with those people. Yeah. And I think she fell in love. Now, Judy Dench, who plays Queen Victoria in the movie, she doesn't, but Judy's all soft in English. She thinks, what a lovely romantic tale. Deepest love and devotion. I think, I think they got it. Well, I hope they did. Anyway, w in, in the making of this movie, there were horses on the scene. Oh, my God. I never worked with horses. Oh. I've worked with chimpanzees and seagulls. Yeah. I've worked with Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs. They're disgraceful. But, oh, the smelliest animal on earth. The, the monkeys, the, the chimpanzees are fine. They love you. And they, they love right. chewing gum. Right. They're right. happy creatures. But horses are nice big things, but they're flatulent. Oh, really? It's the diet. It's, it's oats and uh, it's, hey, it's the same as when you hey. become a vegetarian, the same thing happens yeah, to you. You pass the gas all the time. <laughs> so this, this blue, it's a white horse, and it just, it, it was brilliant, this horse. It would, not only did it fart all the time, but it, its timing was impeccable. <laughs> You know, Queen Victoria, I, I could, love impeccable I, timing I, when it comes to farting. Oh, oh, yeah. It could do walking ones. You know those, <laughs> those. Yeah. As you're walking, and we would be in agony and desperate to get finished. We'd have to go back and do it all again. But uh, you, Queen Victoria would say to John Brown, please never leave me. I, I need you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I, and I, when, when you go to the movie, do you hear the... <laughs> no, because they were all cut, but they, they must have a good cut of the... Because we would just collapse. And, I, <laughs> and, I would, and then I would blame her. Oh, Judy, for God's God sake. It yes, wasn't yes, me. Yes. You, please, please, it was You mustn't... She would panic. You mustn't believe him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and the real sort of... <laughs> ones, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's such a pleasant noise. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's, it's constant. <coughs> <laughs> On that note, I hope the picture does very well. It's doing so well. Good. We made it for a million pounds. You're kidding. In 30 days. Wow. In any event, thanks for coming over tonight. It's been and I, such and a I pleasure. And I apologize with all the pipe uh, bursting here. I'm not surprised people are trying to break out of here. <laughs> 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 the pleasure's mine. The Thank pleasure you. is mine, very, too. Very Thank much. you, sir. Billy Connolly is the guest. The movie is called Mrs. Brown. Uh, back with a look at the legendary Red Skelton after these messages.